So that's the basics of it. Now I wanna test myself versus the bot. So I wanna take this image here and it took me a lot of hours to do this, maybe even like 60 hours. So I wanted to put this to the test and see how well the computer can do something like this in 60 seconds, because that's how long mid journey takes. So I'll just do it live for you guys and you can see what we're dealing with here. 60 seconds, go for it, robot. Okay, it's looking pretty rough so far. Okay, you gotta be kidding me. Look at this one up here and this one. If you don't know what Mid Journey is, well, I'm gonna show you and I think you're in for a treat. If you do know what Mid Journey is, then we're gonna talk about how best to use it as artists. Personally, I think it's one of the most fascinating and intriguing and addicting tools that I've come across in a long time. My kids and I have been experimenting with it for hours upon hours, and frankly, we have been shocked by many of the results. The short explanation of what Mid Journey is and what it does is that it's an artificial intelligence system that can generate artwork based on just word input from the user. And it actually draws upon a huge database of real artwork to come up with these ideas and to generate imagery. The results are fascinating and sometimes very, very good. Like, maybe a little too good. I mean, should I be concerned about this? That's a question some people have. Anyway, we will talk about all of this. We'll discuss, is, is this a threat or an amazing tool? We'll talk about the ethics of an AI system drawing upon other people's art in order to generate new art. We'll talk about how you can use it right now for free, but more importantly, we'll talk about why would you use it as an ArcViz artist or any kind of artist. Spoiler alert here. I am not concerned about Mid Journey. I am actually extremely excited by it. And I think that a lot of other ArcViz artists will be and should be as well. Let's get into a demonstration and I think you will see why. Okay, first I want to very quickly get you set up in, in Mid Journey yourself so that you can start making your own stuff. So to do that, type in Mid Journey to Google. Go to Mid Journey. It takes you to this weird looking page and you just say join the beta. Now it's connected to Discord so I have the Discord app on my computer. It can also take you to discord.com. You just have to accept the invite and then go to Discord and you become part of the Mid Journey server. When you're in Discord, you should have your Mid Journey server over here that you could be part of. So there's rules, there's FAQ, they're getting started. Basically what the getting started thing tells you is to go to these newbie rooms and here is where you type in Backslash, is that a backslash? Imagine, this is how you give it prompts, okay? So imagine is a prompt. You can just click there and it gives you the prompt and then you say, guy sitting at computer recording YouTube video. So it's 70% done here. Okay, there you go. So images, you could make this look like an illustration, a painting, watercolor, whatever. These are sort of photorealistic. So yeah, here's the finished versions. Now, a couple other things to know, you can always just right click and go to, where is it? You wanna go to the bot. You gotta go to the bot and you wanna message it direct. So here, click on this, this bot and say message. And that takes you to the private channel with just you and your bot. But it's not really private, okay? Keep that in mind. It is public. There are rules as far as what you can type in. There's lots of good information out there for Mid Journey that shows you like how to do your prompts, how this all works, what the rules are. You can also give it prompts like subscribe. 
Okay, and then you just hit enter again, and then it'll take you to a subscription page. You could do $10 for limited amounts of images or $30 for unlimited images. All still public, keep in mind, so it can be seen in the public gallery. And you can pay $20 extra to make it private. You can do help. So this can give you all the different information that you need. You can do settings and give that as a prompt. It'll bring up settings. These are the settings. Okay, so I'm in Mid Journey version 4. It's different than Mid Journey version 3 in that it's supposed to be a lot better with characters and things like that, and I find it to just give better results overall. If you look in the community showcase here, you can see all sorts of super cool things that have been created using Midjourney and some creepy things and it actually shows you what prompts were used to do it too. So that's the basics of it. Now I want to test myself versus the bot. So I want to take this image here, okay, which you may have seen before if you follow me anywhere. But it was for originally for my forest, my 3D environment scene, and I've put a newer cabin in here. I've even done this in Unreal Engine at this point. But this is a this part. This one is a V-Ray rendering, and it took me a lot of hours to do this. Maybe even like 60 hours. As a quick side note, if you want to learn any of this V-Ray stuff or Unreal Engine stuff, check the links below for my courses on all of these things. So this, there's a lot of time involved in this. So I wanted to put this to the test and see how well the computer can do something like this in 60 seconds, because that's how long Mid Journey takes. So I'll just do it live for you guys and you can see what we're dealing with here. Okay, so this image, 60 hours. Let's see what the bot can do in 60 seconds. So we start with imagine. And how would we describe this image? It really tests your descriptive abilities. So we'd say a frame cabin in the woods surrounded by evergreen trees, warm light coming from the interior. And then you can give it like emotions or moods that you want it to evoke. We definitely need to call out blue fogginess and atmospheric light, volumetric light. We want it to be a wide angle shot so that it doesn't just zoom right in on the cabin. And we want to do aspect ratio. Okay, so you can do prompt kind of adjustments here at the end. Say AR, that's aspect ratio two, three. Let's see if that works. Now with version four of Mid Journey, you're limited, I think, to either two, three, three, two, or the standard square. Let's leave it at that and just see what we get right here. 60 seconds, go for it, robot. Remember, this is my work, Six, 60 hours worth of it. Let's see what the bot gives us. Okay, it's looking pretty rough so far. Okay, you gotta be kidding me. Look at this one up here and this one. These ones look like Thomas Kincaid paintings. Not a fan, but these ones, dude. Okay, that's pretty good. It didn't really figure out the warm light coming from the interior very well. Okay, then we can we can get more variations of this though. So we can do variation two, variation four. We can upscale them too if we want. Okay, that's crazy though, right? I mean, this is like getting you, I mean, it's getting something photo real. It's also getting you like, you know, 70% to here or something. But in general, I mean, this, this looks really good. But in general, I do like mine better. But this gives me some really cool ideas for what I can do, right? Yeah, blah, blah, blah. The point is, I won and I get to keep my job. Step aside, robot. So this is where it comes into the fact that I don't think robots are going to actually replace us because you know, I was in full control of what this was going to look like. And this is just basing it off of whatever image it, images it finds on the internet. So this is fully custom, according to the artist. And this is something generic that is spit out by the robot. However, this took 60 seconds. 
and this took much, much longer. So if you want like a generic image of an A-frame sitting in a forest, this is a better way to do it. If you want a very specific A-frame cabin sitting in a forest, well then there's no other way around it than to do this. So this isn't replacing us, but it is giving us some awesome ideas and inspiration for what our cabin could look like, right? Based off a simple prompt in 60 seconds. And that's where we get to how I think this thing should be used for 3D artists, archivist artists, and artists of any kind. One way that we can and should be using mid-journey, in my opinion, is for what I would call stock imagery. You may have noticed that I have a bunch of images in this video that are basically like stock images. Except I get to be very specific about what I want to be in the stock image and it generates it for me very quickly. And really, even if you need something really weird, like a robot and a man staring into each other's eyes affectionately, well, Mid Journey has no problem generating whatever you ask it to. These are things that wouldn't exist in a normal stock imagery database. And this is a lot cheaper and a lot more effective, in my opinion, than traditional stock photography or stock imagery. Professional photos would still obviously be better in some cases, but for what I needed here, mid-journey all the way. Also, as a 3D artist, I need random images of stuff all the time. Textures is one of the big things, and I don't see mid-journey being there on textures just yet, maybe in the future, but what about something like a work of art, a generic work of art to put on the wall, or a generic book cover? I can generate those things quite easily without needing to worry about copyright infringements or stealing low resolution images off the internet and trying to edit out watermarks things like that who does that stuff anyway <clears throat> obviously mid journey is great for these kind of things but now for the most exciting use for mid journey and that for me is coming up with concepts and ideas. Midjourney is so great for this. You may have seen me create mood boards in the past where I do sketches and gather hundreds of images from around the internet to try and plan out a rendering. Well, Midjourney is gonna make that process a lot faster and a lot easier, in my opinion. It can search the internet so much faster, so much more efficiently, and it can package all those mood images, all that information that I'm trying to gather, it can package it all into a nice little single image for me. Plus it can give me great ideas for composition and color theory and lighting. Anyway, Mid Journey is extremely good at creating inspiration images for your next 3D project. It just is. Just type in what you're thinking about creating and it will return some awesome ideas. In this regard, I think Mid Journey can improve my own artistic skills because it makes it easier to emulate what great artists has, have achieved before me. It helps mix things up when I'm stuck in a creative rut and quite simply, it gets ideas flowing. Okay, I'm gonna be honest here and say that I don't fully know and understand all the complexities of the ethics of this. So I will just share my initial thoughts after using Midjourney AI. The main issue I see coming up is that the system is trained on existing artwork that is copyrighted artwork without the consent of the artist. And my thought about that is that we as humans do that all the time, but we are not nearly as effective, efficient at it, and we don't do it in such a blatant way, I would say. Well, we do, but that could be hit with a copyright infringement legally, right? My point is I can certainly see the concern there. So the issue is that AI is really good at the process I just described. So it does maybe start to feel a little bit unethical. Okay, and where people especially have a problem with it is if you start selling the work as your own or even just plugging in someone else's art, running it through the AI and getting something new back, slightly adjusted maybe, and then calling that your own work. That one feels like a ripoff, and obviously it is. You had to you had to take the image in the first place and put it in there, and unless you had that artist's consent to do that, you know you're not really allowed to do that. It's just, I mean, you can you can screenshot it off the internet. That's the that's the internet world we live in, obviously, but happens all the time. 
but is that ethical i don't think so that seems a little that seems like it's pushing the limit there's definitely some gray areas here overall i personally don't feel bad about using the way that i've demonstrated here mostly for inspiration purposes and for generating weird stock images i have no problem doing that selling it as my own art that feels weird to me because there's art happening here but i'm not the artist like i didn't do any art i typed in a few words so it'd be weird for me to sell that as my own art however the things that i create that it inspires me to create and i in turn put in the work to create something inspired by that that's my own art overall i totally understand the fear of having your talent and your skill ripped off and i also would agree that the laws probably haven't caught up with this technology yet so there might be some things to figure out still to protect people's intellectual property i also think that a lot of the claims a lot of the arguments are based in fear of losing work to machines right that's a real thing and if you were a concept artist or someone that produces stock photography the two things that i said this is really good at right i would totally understand if you feel like this is a threat but the other side of that coin is that we as artists in a digital world are always needing to adapt and technology seems to march forward whether we want it to or not and uh, not much we can do to stop it usually so adapting and embracing and using these things as tools usually seems like the way to go for me yeah it's kind of like as a 3d artist when a new software comes out where i was spending years trying to develop a workflow custom tools to do certain things and then some software comes out and basically does exactly what i was trying to do but in an extremely fast efficient way so fast that i could never beat it and all that work that i was doing is now obsolete essentially and you can pay 700 dollars for this new software that does everything i was trying to do but super easy it's that same kind of thing My biggest question for you all is what are your thoughts on the ethics of this mid-journey and also AI art in general? Maybe you know way more about it and, if, and maybe I've completely missed the mark. I don't know. Maybe I'm willfully contributing to the demise of my own profession. You let me know in the comments. I'm sure you know more about it than I do. Overall, thanks for joining me on this mid-journey journey. journey. If nothing else, Midjourney is super fun. I also happen to think it's a very interesting tool that we're not gonna be able to stop. Artificial intelligence is on its way and I think we should, by all means, find useful ways to make it to make our artwork, our creativity better. And of course, I wanna hear from you. Let me know if you've used Midjourney or other AI systems. Let me know what you think of the ethics. Let me know how you're using it. Put it all in the comments. Let's start a discussion. Make sure to like and subscribe if you found this to be useful. And if you want other videos about 3D graphics, ArcViz, the various different software that I teach and that I know about, just subscribe for good stuff. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys, you can also plug in images to Midjourney and get back very interesting results. I'm going to put in a picture of myself and see what I get back. Let's check it out. I freaking hate my journey.